A couple of days ago, we heard that the National Guard was being activated in Wisconsin and reactivated in Washington, D.C. because they had brought in the National Guard, then brought them back out. But yes, people, the rioting has not stopped. The protests have not stopped. You're not hearing about it as much in the media because the media gets bored with things and they require constant escalation to keep attention. So what happens is you get these gradually escalating riots to this crazy point where there's looting and vandalism and destruction. And then when things simmer down a little bit, but don't stop, it's not shocking anymore. So the average person moves on and now they're chasing after the COVID narrative. People are still protesting. An occupation has been set up in New York City, like a weird little autonomous zone type thing, kind of like an Occupy Wall Street protest, which is surprising because the city normally doesn't allow this and take a heavy hand against it. But now here we go. Maybe it's because Bloomberg is gone. But Donald Trump is now saying the other day, that hundreds of people have been arrested for toppling statues. I want to make sure I get the, the, he didn't give a specific number, but according to CBS, they say President Trump is applauding the arrests of hundreds of people in the wake of toppling statues and monuments nationwide during protests against racial injustice. He says, I mean, you're also talking about statues of George Washington, Abraham Lincoln. They'd like to get Jesus. You know that, right? They said, we want to get Jesus. Mr. Trump told Sean Hannity at a Fox News town hall in Green Bay, Wisconsin. After calling Chicago worse than Afghanistan, Mr. Trump revived an argument he made in 2018 for stop and frisk, the practice of police temporarily detaining, questioning and searching civilians in the street for possible contraband uh, proved controversial, with critics pointing to data showing it disproportionately targeted people of color before it was halted in New York City. So here's what Trump says. He says Bloomberg blew it because he went crazy with it and ultimately took away a lot of rights and it, uh, it wasn't a good job he did. But former mayor and current lawyer Rudy Giuliani started stop and frisk and he did a great, he did a great, Uh, he did a great, it was a great thing he did for New York. I I don't want to read too much into that. The main point is Trump is saying straight up that several, uh, that hundreds of people have now been arrested for the toppling of statues. The point he was making was that we don't have like law enforcement agencies aren't putting out press releases every single time they make an arrest for somebody who, who helped tear down a statue. Hopefully that's true. I don't believe it. Because the Department of Justice, is my understanding, does sometimes put out these press releases. And you'd think we'd hear about something somewhere, I guess, even in conservative media, people have a a vested interest in figuring out what's going on. And there are conservative journalists who would write about something like this, but we're not hearing it. So you know what? Fine. I guess you can take Trump's word for it. I'd like to see some, some hard evidence on these people who are being arrested. But these protests have not stopped. And I kid you not, about an hour or two before uh, recording this video, they were still rioting and looting in Portland. Now, okay, I know, I know it's Portland, right? What am I supposed to say? <laughs> no one's surprised by what Portland is doing. And I tell you what, man, I, I, I know it might sound like beating a dead horse and, I, and I, I'm a bit reticent to even say it, but listen, we're a month in, okay, to nonstop protest and rioting, almost over a month at this point. It was, I believe it was the 24th of May when George Floyd lost his life and the protests are up there only a few days after. So we're now moving out, you know, longer than a month of protesting across this country. Now, for the most part, the, the, the craziest riots and looting stopped in the first week, but it has still been going on. All right. So I, I think I actually can show you this tweet here from Andy No. He said at uh, 8.01 a.m., police finally dispersed Antifa rioters after a long night of early uh, of early mor- long night and early morning of violence and arson attacks in North Portland, it started with an autonomous zone occupation at the North Precinct before devolving into street fires and looting. It has been going on for a month, longer than a month now. It's not stopping. So what am I supposed to? What's what's supposed to happen? It, who's supposed to take care of this? I honestly have no idea. But Trump has ragged on all of these cities. He says Democratic cities like Baltimore and Oakland are so lawless, it's like living in hell and claims Chicago is worse than Afghanistan during town hall, then warns Biden will destroy our country. Well, Trump's a little exaggerated there, but I understand the sentiment and I don't think it's, he's wrong. These cities are in really bad shape. In, in the Oakland, in the Bay Area, people have to put signs in their windows pledging allegiance to wokeness. Otherwise, people will destroy their windows. And it's not an exaggeration. Go to Berkeley, walk down the street and look at the businesses and you will see the signs in the windows. It's 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 really creepy. We know what those signs really mean. You know, the signs will say something like Black Lives Matter. They'll it'll, it'll be the revolution fest. 
but they may as well just write, please spare my store. They'll write, my, my, they may as well write things like, you know, please don't hurt my family. Please spare my business, whatever, because that's what they're really saying. There was a, a famous video from the Hamburg G20 protests of all of these storefronts completely smashed out, save one. And you know why that one wasn't? Right in the middle, everything else destroyed. Because it had, I think, in the window, it had like an Antifa symbol. And so they left it alone. Isn't it funny how that works? How they force compliance. And boy, are they. There's a lot of creepy stuff going on. It is getting creepier by the minute. They are pulling out all the stops right now as we head into November. And I, and I wonder what this really means. Because you can argue that the left is going crazy. You can argue that's going to help Trump. I can't, you know, look, I am of the opinion right now, and I'm not entirely convinced Donald Trump is going to win. I know it was not even that long ago. I was saying, I think Trump's going to landslide. I can't, I don't believe the polls. Now I'm starting to, to shift a little bit away from that. And I'm leaning towards, I think right now, Trump is, if he stays exactly as he's doing right now, I think Trump will lose. All of these riots going on, and I'm seeing posts on Facebook from my friends saying we have no leaders, we have no leadership. And I'm like, so if, if the idea that Trump is trying to in, enforce is that the, the states and the mayors are responsible for their cities, it doesn't seem to be working among many of my friends who are not super political. They think Trump is supposed to do everything. And maybe that's the strategy of many of the Democrats as to why the Democratic cities are just letting things go nuts, because they know at, in the end Many of these governors, mayors, whatever, are not up for re-election. And so when people go to the voting, voting booth and they're like, everything's bad, I want to change, they'll vote for change. It doesn't matter if Biden is better or worse. It doesn't matter if Trump is better or worse. It matters if things are bad right now. But I don't know. Because the other side of that argument is, with these riots, people are going to demand law and order, right? They're going to be mad at the mayors and governors. And so they're going to vote for Trump because Trump is the strong candidate who's condemning all of this. But that implies people are smart enough to understand the president doesn't have the power uh, to a certain degree to actually do anything. So I'm not convinced. I was uh, there's, there's an, there's an article. I want to read. I want to read about these cities first, but I really want to get into this. Actually, no, let's just let's just jump right into it. Take a look at this. Uh, this tweet I posted. I said, I think Trump is on track to lose in November. So many Trump supporters convinced they can't possibly lose. The polls are wrong again, et cetera, et cetera. Look at the fervent masses out in the streets. People are going nuts. And with mail-in voting, I bet turnout skyrockets. This video right here is night three, Occupy City Hall. This is in New York. People are occupying. A, it's a, it's, it's, it looks like it's bigger than Occupy Wall Street was. Now, I find it suspect because when Occupy Wall Street was, was forming, the police went nuts and started beating the crap out of people, dragging them out of the park and all that stuff. And it actually made things worse. The city is now allowing these people to do these things. Many cities are allowing them to, do, uh, to do these things. The autonomous zone in Seattle was ignored and then multiple shootings happened. And now they're finally wiping things up. But I have to wonder how much of this is the Democratic operatives trying to take advantage of the outrage. And I, I really do think that's what we're seeing. I don't think there's a grand conspiracy, but I do think there's opportunists. So after the death of George Floyd, Democrats knew exactly what they had on their hands and went nuts with it. The reason I think that's the case, I don't think they started the protests. I think they tried to weasel in and, and, and you know, guide the sales, essentially. The, exam the, the, the best example I can come up with, or, or that, that's, that exemplifies this to me, is that after four nights, after four shootings in three nights, some CHOP committee emerges in Seattle announcing that they're disbanding the protest and that if you want to support the revolution, vote for Joe Biden. And I laughed harder than I've ever laughed. OK, now I'm, and I'm not I'm exaggerating because I didn't laugh that hard, but I laughed. It's funny because I, I remember Occupy Wall Street. And if you told the people at Occupy Wall Street to vote for Obama for the revolution to reelect him, they would have laughed in your face. Someone probably would have punched you. So for the Chaz Chop far leftists who are fighting with cops to now all of a sudden be advocating for Joe Biden as the revolution, I really, really, really think, OK, and I think you got to agree with me because you'd be nuts to think otherwise. These are Democratic operatives who have tried to seize the message of the protests and use it to their advantage. These protests that are popping up all over Portland. OK, fine. I get it. Portland. We, we know what Portland is. New York. I also get it, too. But you've got these you've got people coming out with more zeal and uh, uh, zealotry than we've seen from uh, from a, in a long time. Here's here's what I got to say, man. These protests haven't stopped and Trump hasn't done anything about it. 
Maybe Trump shouldn't. One of the arguments is that they're trying to bait him into using an authoritarian hand, which results in him losing. And the argument in favor of how this benefits Trump is that when you have violent riots, then people swing towards law and order. Well, we are having violent riots for sure. The press is focused on the peaceful protesters. So you have to, under, you have to, you have to understand this. They may, they may understand what they're doing, okay? The study that was pushed recently, which allegedly got a guy fired, not, they're saying it maybe, maybe he didn't. It was this lefty you know, social scientist tweeted out a study showing that after the MLK riots, the uh, uh, polls swung in favor of Republicans because riots scare people. They, the, the argument was that peaceful protests generate positive press coverage and talking points and violent riots result in uh, negative talking points and fear. And when people are scared, they vote for the authority. They vote for the law and order candidate. Well, what's been happening when these violent riots erupted? What did the news say? Peaceful protesters. There will be peace in Minneapolis when they were burning down the Minneapolis third precinct. What did MSNBC say? They said, now these protests are still mostly peaceful. And there it was. Why do you think they keep calling them peaceful protests? These people know what they're doing. Now, look, you got to a lot of people fall into this conspiracy mindset and you got to understand there's 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 an idea called a standalone complex. It's actually, I think it's from the, the anime Ghost in the Shell. Great show, by the way. And the idea is that a bunch of people act in a similar manner, which creates the illusion of a concerted effort. So people think it's a conspiracy. It's actually a bunch of people doing similar things. I would argue that this is that phenomenon. All of these, these Democratic operatives, all of these Democrats in media, all of these lunatic activists who, who eschew objectivity, they're not coordinating anything. They just all want Trump to lose. So when the guy at MSNBC says it's a peaceful protest, he's not doing it because anyone told him to do it. He's doing it because he wants to support the protests. When CNN Cuomo says, who said protests need to be peaceful? No one told him to do it. Well, and actually, in Cuomo's case, maybe because he's a puppet and he hates his job. I don't know if you remember that. He's complaining about his job. And he hates doing it. They probably told him what to say. The people at the people at CNN watched rioters destroy their lobby and now they're scared. And so they got on their knees sobbing like little whiny babies with no spine. But many of them want Trump to lose. That's it's CNN. I mean, look, Time Warner contributed to Hillary Clinton. Here's what you got to consider, man. All of these riots, you might be thinking, that's going to help Donald Trump. And I agree they would if the media called them violent riots. They don't. They call them peaceful protesters. What did the BBC say? You know, it was like uh, in the UK, I think 27 police officers injured at mostly peaceful demonstration. Oh, and conservatives can laugh all day and night. Ha ha ha. But then what do they say when the right comes out? And in the, in the, this is in the UK, mind you. So it's not necessarily one for one compared to the United States. But when the right wing people came out, not even necessarily right wing, just like locals and British like patriots or whatever. I don't know what you want to call them, people who like the, their country. They said violent far right escalation, blah, blah, blah. There's some speculation that regular people can see through this. I'm not convinced. I am not convinced. And you've got uh, right now, Trump is polling at, according to the New York Times, Siena, uh, 36 percent to Biden's 50 percent. Perhaps what you're really seeing is the 36 percent of people who most of them watch what's going on. They, they read like the Daily Wire and Fox News and they're seeing these things. But it's funny when people when polls come out from Fox News that say Trump is underwater from Rasmussen saying his approval rating is way down and people are like, the polls are wrong. I insist. I'm like, you're nuts, man. I'm sorry. There's a threshold for the polls being wrong. Many of the polls in 2016 were within the margin of error. What people need to realize is that a lot of these polls showed Trump was down by several percentage points, which was a big, big swing. However, he still had enough electoral votes to win. He won in some places by thousands of votes. If the Democrats and these people learned their lesson, Trump can't possibly win. He can't. Now, I don't think it's that bad. I think Trump can win. I think the Republicans can win. But I think for all you Republicans, Trump supporters, whatever, it is going to be the fight of your lives. Absolutely. Because you got, you got to understand, man, don't if you if you underestimate the Democrats, then you would be a fool. In 2016, they lost because they were 
They were idiots who put up a terrible candidate and didn't realize what was going on. Within a few years later, they still didn't understand what had happened and why they had lost. But now it seems like they're just, instead of trying to figure out why they lost, they're just doing, it reminds me of the Jericho missile from Iron Man, just standing back and just carpet bombing everything. Everything is going wrong. The economy's collapsing, mass riots in the streets. You've got a pandemic, Trump, orange man scandal with China. They are just saying, you know what? Just do all of it. And maybe the chaos is too much for the average American to bear. And they just say, please make it stop. And they don't vote for Trump because of it. Maybe many people blame Trump, or maybe they don't. We really don't know. It seems like they're going nuts. But let me, let me tell you, with all of these protests and riots exploding across the country, man, the polling, the, the polling that was done in 2016, many of it was, was wrong, wrong, wrong. Their predictions were way off. Their predictions were based off polls that were wrong because they didn't understand the culture war. At least that's, what I, that's partly uh, what I think played a role in this, that people who never voted before came out to vote for Trump many of them for PC reasons or culture war reasons. They may be making the same mistake. They do not understand how the culture war is changing how we vote. A good example would be someone like me. I am liberal on economic policy. I lean slightly to the left. I like a public option plan. I don't like universal. I I actually really, really love the idea of universal health care. I just don't know if we can ever actually make it work. That's the challenge. I'd love to have a system where everybody has everything they've ever needed without question. It sounds great. Sounds like a utopian, beautiful future we cannot do. So I'm a realist. Idealistically, I'm actually fairly far left libertarian. I'd love a hippie world where we all get to, you know, live like Star Trek with replicators and, you know, maybe beautiful. Everybody can share in the great bounty of a post-scarcity world, but we're not there. So uh, realistically, eh, more of a moderate lefty liberal type. Here's the thing, man. Here's the thing. I lean left on many cultural issues and many political issues, but the current democratic establishment, the protesters and the mainstream left are out of their minds. I got to do a segment on this later. You see the Jenna Mar- you know who Jenna Marbles is? She's a YouTuber with 20 million subscribers. And she did this whole self-flagellation apology video where she's like, I can't believe I made all these jokes. Like the most nightma- nightmarishly pathetic thing I've ever seen. So here's where we're at. I lean left. I'm not going to vote for Trump based on the economy. I don't care. I don't care about the economy. I know a lot of people do. But what these people aren't taking into consideration, which is good for Trump, is the culture war. And I'm, I've seen those progressives. I don't know if you saw my video on my main channel over at TimCast.net several days ago, where progressive host Kyle Kalinske said the culture war is a bad bet, that Trump needs to get on economic issues, but he's not, you know, he's, he's, he's going to lose because of it. I'm not entirely convinced. When they poll people at the national level, it's not that important because we know that people in California are fired up, but California doesn't matter. They're going to vote blue. The issue is Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, the blue wall states, Florida, the swing states and some states may actually swing in a direction we don't realize. We, we, it's unpredictable and it's hard to know for sure. Based on what the Democrats are doing, I think Trump is on track to lose, not just because of the, 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 media, the, the media claiming it's all peaceful, not calling Trump all the worst names in the book. They're trying everything. And that puts Trump at a major disadvantage. National polls this bad are they're bad. You can try and pretend that it's, it's, it's the polls, polls are wrong again. That'd be a mistake. Now, it's possible that the economy is less of a factor. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, Moody's analytics said that they, they, they didn't prop. Moody's, Moody's has been historically uh, accurate until Donald Trump. And they said that they didn't take certain things into account. You know, the, the Trump's voter base and things like that. I still don't think they are. I don't think people realize how influential the culture war will be. So the point I was trying to make earlier is that someone like me, who's slightly on the left economically, but is leaning towards voting for Trump. I'm not, you know, people keep saying like the the left is saying, Tim absolutely will vote for Trump. People on the right are saying, Tim, when are you going to announce you're voting for Trump? I'll I'll, I'll do it when I think he's he's, he's the, the right choice as we move forward. I'm not entirely convinced right now. I don't know what the alternative is, but we will see. Right now, Trump seems to be talking more about personal grievances. And I, look, you got, address it or don't. He's tweeting. His, his tweets seem just mostly complaints. His rallies are talking about how he doesn't like people, we, uh, you know, the people who are mean to him. Where is his conversation about corruption? He's talking a bit about culture war issues. That's true. 
but he's not leaning heavy enough into what he's going to do about it. And what is he doing about it? And what are Republicans doing about it? Republicans, in my opinion, have done nothing. Now, okay, there's an authoritarian versus libertarian argument, right? That the Republicans shouldn't necessarily be doing things. The problem is the Democrats are. They've literally gotten on bent knee to the woke insanity. And I, as a moderate liberal person, look, I love The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. You know, back in the day, we had real comedy. George Carlin was not a conservative guy. Neither is Dave Chappelle. That's what I like. I like a mature, responsible, confident talk. And if you want to talk about real ideas, we can do it. The culture war is a huge issue for me. When they tear down statues of abolitionists, when they tear down statues of our founding fathers, that freaks me out. Trump says he's arrested several hundred people. I like that. That's a good thing. Will that swing many Americans? Not if he can't get his message out. And that's, that's what they're trying to restrict. Twitter is now censoring him. So I am not convinced. And you know what, man? I'll say, I'll, I'll, I'll put it, I could, I could rant on this for a really, really long time, but I won't, I won't go on too much longer. Listen, how many, how many people in this space, independent media, be it conservative or otherwise, warned that if the Republicans did not deal with censorship, they would be crushed. Everybody, every single person, libertarian, moderate, centrist, conservative. And now here we are. Trump is being drowned by negative press, as he's always done, as, 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 as always. And many people are blaming him. If you don't believe me, look, I'm telling you, man, you, this, I think Trump can win for sure. I think he's in bad track right now. I'm looking at what my friends are posting. I'm looking at what people like, I, I, have a, I know a bunch of people from Chicago who are apolitical, and I'm seeing what they're posting. And while many people have been activated more to the right towards Trump's camp simply because of the culture war, I don't think it's a guarantee. The culture war is hot, hot, hot right now. It is a flame, and mail in voting is coming. So, as I said before, this may be the case. You get all of these kids who are, who are you know, memeing and TikToking and all these things to go after Trump, and they make it a meme game to vote against Trump because it'll be funny or something like that. They figure out how to weaponize um, the, the power of, you know, youth meme viral campaigns. All those mail-in votes are going to put Trump at a major, a major disadvantage. Moody's analytics said that if the economy remains strong, they would the Democrats would need historic turnout to defeat Trump. The economy is in the gutter because of COVID. Many people are smart enough to realize that's not Trump's fault. And the polls actually favor Trump on the economy. Most polls show that the American people would prefer Trump over Biden in repairing the economy. So Trump still has that economic advantage. However, the economy is bad. Many people aren't paying attention. So they'll just vote against Trump, blaming him for COVID like the media has been doing over and over again. In which case, will mail-in votes give the left many uh, a much higher turnout? I believe the answer will be yes. And that's literally the argument the Democrats have made. We want to make sure everyone votes. You can't argue against it. If everyone votes and they vote against Trump and Trump loses, well, hey, that's how the system works. So what you need to do is figure out your messaging. Everybody's going to play dirty. So it's hard to know uh, exactly how, do you deal, how you deal with this. But I'll tell you what, man. Uh, here's what I think will happen. I think if Joe Biden wins, you take a look at like the Jenna Marbles video, one of the OG YouTubers, 20 million subs crying because she made naughty jokes. It's, it's mind blowing to me that you can have 20 million subs, get millions of views, all loving you, and then get a few nasty tweets and think that represents all people. So she, these people have lost the plot. What do you think is going to happen if Biden wins and these people actually take over? Nancy Pelosi was on bent knee to these people. It's, I'm, it's, I mean, that literally she went in whatever, whatever that building was with Schumer and other Democrats, and they got on their knees for these people. Trump will never kneel. That I can respect. These people have lost the plot. They've gone nuts. They're, they're dogmatic ideologues. When Biden wins, they take over. And then guess what? Conservatives will do nothing. They won't protest. They, 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 they won't run. They won't pass bills. They won't, they'll do nothing. They'll do nothing. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just what happens. Moderates, of course, will do nothing. They'll just sit back and say, oh, well, you know. But the left goes around smashing things, occupying, protesting, surrounding buildings. They're organized. And that's why they're, 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 they're winning so much. Trump was a shock to the system. But Trump ran when the Democrats were weakened by the revolution, the civil war with the Democratic Party, splitting them and giving Trump an opportunity to, 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 to come in. Now the Democrats have bowed to the mob, to the far left, meaning they are in control. 
There's no dispute. They know what they want and they don't want Trump. But I don't know for sure. Some of these people may, may want to see the, the final blow and the Democratic establishment, in which case, with Bernie Sanders being knocked out, they let Trump take it to cause all of these Democrats to come crawling and begging to them. They're already doing it now. They're already doing it now, right? Nancy Pelosi couldn't even stand up after she kneeled. She kneeled for these people. And there it is. They'll smash up your businesses. They'll shut down your favorite shows. They'll ban your movies. They'll fire your favorite actors. They're repealing civil rights law in California. We, I know what comes next after Biden wins, after they put him in his little wheelchair with a blanket on his lap and wheel him into the sun and he sits there and falls asleep all day and doesn't do his job because he can't. What happens next? I think many of these far leftists are probably thinking, you know what? We couldn't get Bernie, but the next best thing is a do nothing failure of a Democrat, giving them the opportunity to take the reins and take over. And that's what you'll get. So if you really think Trump should win, then you better, you better not have that mentality that you've got it guaranteed. You better fight for your life. And for the people who, for some reason, want Biden, which I don't believe really exists, uh, the same goes for you, man. Trump supporters aren't backing down. Trump supporters are, uh, they, they, they love this man. They love him. Even his, his critics, they want him to win. It's unpredictable, man. It really, really is. You know, things can change a whole lot very, very fast. We could be a month out from the election and some, you know, bomb goes off or something and all of a sudden Trump wins 100%. No idea. I'll leave it there, though. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel, and I will see you all then.